If you were thinking of throwing a carne asada, but you don't want the hassle of making a fire, or maybe you just don't own a grill, well, that's fine, because today I'm going to be cooking it all on my stovetop, and I'm going to show you just how I do it. I'm going to start off with the beans because that's usually what takes the longest. We sifted through and checked for any rocks like my grandma taught me. And now I'm going to soak them in water for three hours. Usually I soak overnight, but I forgot. Now that my beans have been soaking for three hours, I drain them and set them aside. I'm going to start off by frying half a pack of chopped bacon or five to six strips. And then I'm going to remove that and set it aside. In that same bacon grease, I'm going to saute a quarter of a chopped onion, a whole jalapeno, but if you don't like spicy stuff, remove all the seeds inside or just don't use it at all. I add a tablespoon of chicken bouillon and once the onions are translucent, I go ahead and add the beans. Now I'm going to add all my chicken broth and make sure it's enough that it covers all the beans. I'm going to leave that alone for about an hour on medium and then check back. So now after an hour you can see that there's very little liquid left and the beans are exposed. I'm going to add two cups of water or until your beans are completely submerged again. Then I'm going to add the bacon that we fried, one whole tomato chopped, two limes, I'm going to cover for another hour again. If I had soaked the beans overnight, they would have already been ready. Usually it takes about an hour and a half. But I forgot, it's fine. It took double that, but this is what they were looking at after two hours. So I just went ahead. They were almost ready. I added cilantro, added two more cups of water, and seasoned with salt, pepper, and a tablespoon of garlic powder. So I covered and cooked for the last 30 minutes. After that, they were ready. You can grab one bean and if you can squish between the index and your thumb, then you know they're ready. I also tasted the broth and decided to add one more cup of water in there. After that, I can cover them and leave it on the lowest setting just to keep them warm until the rest of the food is ready. For an easy salsa, I'm just going to boil four to five tomatillos Although here I only had three because I ordered them online and most of them were bad, but that's fine. It'll just be a little bit spicier than usual. I used one jalapeno, a serrano, chile de arbol, a quarter of an onion, and two garlic cloves and boiled for 10 to 12 minutes. Into a blender, I added one lime, salt, pepper, a bunch of cilantro, and a half a teaspoon of chicken bouillon. While it's convenient to buy already made guacamole, it's even easier and cheaper to do it yourself. So in a bowl, I have a quarter of chopped onion, a small diced tomato, and I'm gonna add two aguacates, along with a small bunch of chopped cilantro. Then I'm gonna season with salt and pepper. And I'm also going to add a lime to prevent it from oxidizing or turning brown. Into a hot pan, I added three tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to use this to fry two cups of rice. I usually only make one cup, but I decided to make some extra. One cup is enough for around four to five servings. I'm going to saute some un chopped onion in there, as well as some carrots. You don't have to add carrots, but I wanted to add a vegetable for my kids. Now I'm going to add the first two cups of liquid, which I'm using chicken broth. I'm also adding diced tomato, and I'm going to let, let that cook on medium heat 
until there's little to no liquid left. Once there's little to no water left, I'm going to add the last two cups of water along with a little bit of cilantro, two tablespoons of caldo de tomate, which is tomato bouillon. I'm going to mix that and then cover it back up. Once I notice that it's boiling, I bring the heat all the way down to the lowest setting and leave it alone. I do not mix. After around six to eight minutes, I check on it and if it looks like there's no more liquid, I go ahead and mix this one time, turn off the heat and cover it and leave it alone until the rest of the food is ready. After rinsing my jalapenos, I cut them in half then I take a small spoon and carve out the inside. I try to not leave any seeds in there since my salsa is already going to be really spicy. Next I fill with cream cheese and I scrape the top of it to make sure I leave a smooth flat surface. Now I grab a strip of bacon and start at the back. I continue to wrap and the layers overlap just a little bit, not too much. Since we're going to be cooking on the stove top, I want that to cook evenly. Then when I'm towards the bottom, I cut at an angle, wrap it, and then I tuck in at the back. I have never used toothpicks and it's worked out perfectly fine for me. But if you're scared that they're going to unravel, then go ahead and use them. Maybe just try this, try it out just this once and maybe you won't have to ever use them again. Just make sure that you pop them in the freezer for at least 10 minutes or before you're ready to fry them and you'll be just fine. Since we're going to be cooking the meat on the stovetop, I purchased skirt steak that came butterflied but i'm still gonna trim the silver skin but leave in the fat season both sides with orange pepper lemon pepper salt and lime So I set my cast iron skillet to medium high. Now that I know that it's hot enough, I'm going to place those jalapeno poppers face down. Don't be moving them or trying to flip them around. Just leave them alone to fry for around two minutes. Once they're ready to flip, they won't get stuck and they're going to be looking like this. Fry them for another two minutes on the bottom, then on their sides. Once they're ready to take out, you can leave them in your oven at 350 just to keep them warm while the meat is ready. I'm going to sear the fajita on the same skillet. I place it down, sear for 4 minutes, then flip it over and cook for an additional 3 minutes. Once that piece is ready, I take it out and leave it on a cutting board to rest. Don't cut it right away. Let it rest for at least 10 minutes while you cook the rest of the meat. In that same pan, after cooking the meat, I add some more olive oil and throw in some chopped onions for cebolla asada. I season with salt and pepper and I squeeze the lime in there, saute till translucent. So now it's time to cut up the meat. Always make sure to cut against the grain. You can see here the meat grain is going horizontally and I'm cutting vertically. This is going to make it tender and easier to chew. Now it's just time to serve it and enjoy. So I hope this video encourages you to cook your next carne on your stovetop. You can prepare it hours earlier and then just warm it up in your oven. That way when the game actually starts, you can watch it and not have to worry about flipping anything on your grill. Like and subscribe if you like this video. Thank you for watching.